Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Mauricio Lopez, and today I will be talking to you about the corals and fish communities of Cayo Arcas in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. First, let's get situated. Cayo Arcas is located in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, right here where the red arrow is. It is part of the Campeche Bank Ecological Corridor, which spans from the northern Yucatan Peninsula down to the south southwestern coast off the state of Campeche. We have been doing research on these reefs for a, for a little while now, and our preliminary results show that Cayo Arcas is a unique site. This is because results from our brittle star and amphipod genetics show that there's high self-recruitment to, to this reef, likely due to the cyclonic gyre that forms off the coast of Veracruz, Tabasco, and Campeche, and also, we have found several unique haplotypes that are only present at this reef. Additionally, we, ha we were fortunate to survey these reefs in early 2019, just before a large oil spill occurred in October of 2019. Therefore, this data could be used as a useful baseline to assess the damage of this oil spill. Our work was completed in partnership with the Mexican Navy. The Navy allowed us access to the, these restricted areas and provided their research vessel Antares on two occasions, once in August of 2018 and another in April of two, 2019. Cayo Arcas is a complex of three reefs. Cayo Centro is the largest one, Cayo Oeste on the west, and Cayo Este on the, on the east. We completed surveys at 17 sites ranging in de depths from 1 to 12 meters. We conducted point intercept surveys, belt transects for corals, and belt transects for fish. This allowed us to collect three data sets, one for benthic cover, one for coral diversity, and another one for fish diversity. Let's look at the benthic cover data first. Here we see the, the functional groups we used to describe the bottom cover. First, sand was the most abundant type of bottom cover with about 17%. Next was were live corals with 16.2%. Additionally, octocorals covered 13% of the bottom. This means that 30% of the bottom is covered by stony corals and octocorals. However, turf algae and fleshy macroalgae were also quite prevalent at several of the sites. Next, let's look at coral demographics. First is species richness. Most sites had eight species or fewer. However, site 12 had 14 species. When we look at what species are present, we see that the bottom was dominated by two species in particular. Pseudodiploric clavosa and Parietes asteroides. If we add Ceterastria sidereo, they reach almost 60% of the, of the colonies we surveyed. However, it's also relevant to mention that Montastra cavernosa and Acropa palmata were quite abundant in several of the sites. Next, let's look at colony size. The average size of colonies was below 25% at most of the sites, but there were two sites that had outstanding large corals. First site is Site 9, where we observed a large patch of Acropora palmata. The other site was Site number 11, where we observed several large or Bicella colonies. When we look at partial mortality, we see that it was present at every site. In particular, it was highest in the sites with, mo the, with the largest colonies, sites 9 and 11, although this is not unexpected because smaller colonies cannot withstand high partial mortality before they perish. New and transitional mortality were relatively low, but when we found it, it was due to a few co different causes. Some were diseases, 
as we observed black band disease, dark spot disease, and yellow band disease. Black band disease is pictured on the top right. Dark spot disease affected mainly Cedarastria colonies, like in the bottom right. And some competitive interactions were observed, like in the bottom left, with Cleona delitrix. The prevalence of disease was relatively low, with only 2.4%. However, we also observed 5.8% of colonies had some sort of bleaching, like the top left picture. This is of some concern because our surveys were conducted in April, which is before the highest temperatures are reached in the area. Here are some pictures of colonies we observed during our surveys. As you can see, many have encrusting or plating forms. However, it's important to mention that Acropora palmata is prevalent and healthy at some of these sites. On this slide, we can see some of the larger reef building corals like the Orbicellas on the top left, and even some large Solanastra bernonis. Now, let's look at the fish surveys. First, species richness. Most sites had 25 species or fewer. However, one site had more fish than others, which was site 7, where we found 40 different species. When we look at the number of fish observed at each site, most sites had around 200 individuals. However, three sites had much higher abundances, sites 7, 8, and 10. The average fish length was 12 centimeters. However, there were a couple of sites that had a slightly larger fish, such as site 8, 15, and 17. When we look at species composition, we see that the brown chromis, chromis multilineata, is the most abundant species. Next, we see that Neopomacentris cyanomos is, is also quite prevalent. This is concerning since it is a, an invasive species and seems to have taken hold in, at this reef. Other species present are mostly wrasses, and as you can see, there are few snappers or parrotfish. Here are some pictures of the dominant species in 2018. As you can see, there are mainly small herbivorous fish. In 2019, we see a similar pattern except that we now include Neopomacentris cyanomus as one of the most prevalent species. In conclusion, we registered 37 species of coral. The dominant species were Pseudodiploria clavosa and Parietes asteroides. The majority of the colonies were, were relatively small with under 20 centimeters. Disease prevalence was low and so was bleaching. It is also important to mention that some sites had large Acropora palmata colonies as well as Orbicellas. It is also relevant to mention that we found Acropora cervicornis and Acropora porilifera, although these were found at relatively low numbers. As far as fish are concerned, we recorded 75 species. Unfortunately, few large predators were observed and the majority of the fish recorded were small herbivores. It is also concerning that Neopomacentris cinnamonos is quite abundant and has definitely taken hold at this reef. Therefore, further study is, would be helpful at this, at this reef, especially since the oil spill. So we look forward to going back and seeing what the impact of, of this spill could have been. And with that, I will thank you for your attention and leave you with a fun video of some snappers that must have eluded our fish counters.